Next, we'll formulate the construction stages for this bridge to perform the construction stage analysis. So as you know, construction stay analysis is crucial for this type of bridges where each temporary structure arrangement can lead to critical internal forces in specific members and the structural behavior such as deflection and the stress redistribution uh, will continue to change during and after the construction due to varying time dependent properties such as creep, shrinkage and modulus of elasticity change of the concrete as well as the tendon relaxation. So all these effects we need to simulate to check whether our bridge is safe during the construction process. As I mentioned before, we'll be performing the construction stay analysis using this structured boundary and load group in Midas Civil. So you can activate and deactivate the element boundary and load groups. So thereby you can form the uh, stage, different stages. So in total we have six construction stages for this bridge. In CS1 the duration is one day where my peer and peer cap would be activated at the age of 28 days and the substructure supports and the self weight would be activated in this stage CS1. In CS2 the girders of the span 1 would be activated and then span 1 would be supported on the temporary supports and the pre-stressing would be done for the girders of the span 1. In the CS3 where the duration is 21 days so the diaphragm of the span 1 would be activated at the age of 14 days and the girders for the span 2 would be launched and the previous span 1 girders which are on the temporary supports would be deactivated means the, the temporary supports would be deactivated and would be switched to the bearings, permanent bearings and girders of span 2 would be on the temporary supports in the load part the casting of the slab of the span 1 would begin at the age of 14 day of CS3 hence the wet concrete load of the slab would be acting on the uh, girders of the span 1 and then in CS4 you have 21 days duration where the temporary supports of the span 2 would be deactivated and the span 2 girders would be switched to permanent bearings and these are all the loads that would be acting in the respective construction stages and in CS5 uh, the deck slab for the span 2 would be activated and the load wet concrete load of the span 2 would be deactivated in CS5 itself and at the end of CS5 our construction process uh, would be completed then in CS6 we'll simulate the whole bridge for 10,000 days to accommodate for the long-term stresses due to the time dependent effects so these are all the construction stages that we're gonna define in the subsequent steps so in CS1 the substructure CS2 the girders which are laid on the temporary supports then the permanent bearings for the span 1 girders then the span 2 girders on the temporary supports pre-stressing would be done in CS4 the wet concrete load which would be acting would be um, hardened up and the composite action would kick in in CS4 for the span 1 and CS5 which uh, would be the complete bridge at the end of CS5 so let's define the construction stages for that I'll go to construction stage click on define construction stage here I'll click add so I'll give the name of the first construction stage as CS1 as the duration I'll take as one day so here in CS1 the duration would be 1 and these are the structure boundary and load groups that I'm gonna activate to formulate CS1 so here you have element boundary and load group so these are nothing but structure group and boundary indicates the boundary groups that we have defined and the loads the load group so first CS1 substructure and support so you have, so thereby you can activate and deactivate the element boundary and the load groups to make up the stage so I'll click on CS1 substructure and support so this would be activated on the first day of the construction stage CS1 uh, with a concrete maturity of 28 days so this is, would be the concrete age so I'll click add I'll go to boundary tab 
and add the substructure supports so original and deformed the deformed configuration it would be added so I'll add I'll go to load I'll add the self fate on the first or the last so I'll select first day the self fate would be acting so I'll click on add so whatever the element boundary and the loads that you activate would stay activate activated so on till you deactivate so this is CS1 I'll click OK then I'll add give the name as CS2 here I'll activate the element group which is span 1 girders at the age of 21 click add I'll go to boundary I'll add span 1 temporary supports and the, the rigid links for the span 1 so here next I'll go to load tab so here I need to add the relevant loads which will be coming on the CS2 so here the duration of the CS2 would be 21 days so in CS2 the girders of the span 1 would be stressed in sequence like the first second and the third layer so for that uh, here if you see the span 1 active day it would be the first and the last if you wanted to simulate uh, the time in between so you can add the additional steps so I'll take 0.3 day and 0.6 comma 0.9 and click on add so now this would be uh, visible to choose so I'll click on span 1 PS1 the first layer of the pre-stressing would be stressed or at the 0.3 day that means 0.3 day I'll click add similarly span 1 second layer would be stressed after some time so I took it as 0.6 day I'll click add similarly this would be at the 0.9 day click add so this is how you can create the additional steps for the loads which are coming in between the first and the last day of the construction stage so you can appreciate how powerful uh, the software is in simulating the construction stages next I'll click OK so CS2 is defined next we'll define CS3 duration is 21 days diaphragms would be activated span 1 diaphragms would be activated at the age of 14 and the girders at the age of 21 in the boundary tab so here in CS3 the span 1 girders would be switched to the permanent pairings so we need to deactivate the span 1 temporary supports in this de deactivation dialog I'll click add so the span 1 temporary supports that have been activated in the C previous construction stage CS2 would be deactivated on the first day of CS3 so here the bearings of the span 1 should be activated and the span 2 temporary supports would be activated and the corresponding rigid link in the load tab the wet concrete of the span 1 will be acting uh, on the 14th day where the casting starts on the 14th day of CS3 so we need to add the 14th day click add select wet concrete span 1 select 14th day I'll click add and the span 2 girders would be stressed so I'll be adding the additional steps like 0 0.3 0 0.6 0 0.9 day so span 2 first layer of the tendons of the girder so of the span 2 click add 9 I'll click add so I'll click OK next I'll define CS4 duration is 21 and the element group I'll activate the span 2 diaphragms 
and then dummy members of the span one click add go to boundary tab here I'll deactivate the span to temporary supports activate the span to bearings and in the load tab create the 14th day additional step and I'll deactivate the wet concrete load where in this stage the concrete gets hardened for the wet for the span 1 so the deck gets hardened in the span 1 so that the composite action will kick in so we need to deactivate the previously activated red concrete load for the span 1 I'll deactivate I'll click OK next I'll define CS5 at the age of 14 span to dummies would be activated and then I'll there are no boundaries to activate as the previously defined activated boundaries would stay active till we deactive so in this load tab at concrete the span 2 we need to deactivate click add click OK next we'll define CS6 the last construction stage so which includes 10,000 days duration to simulate the time dependent effects so here in the load tab I'll activate the superimposed dead load on the first stage of this construction stage and thereby uh, the software will simulate the time dependent effects for the 10,000 days click add and the crash barrier load add click OK so these are all the construction stages that we have formulated for the bridge click close now let me visually represent the defined construction stages for that I'll go to display options so here I'll go to boundary tab select all of them and go to load tab select all of the loads and click on apply click OK so now all of the loads and all of the boundaries would be simultaneously displayed now this is the tab to switch between the construction stages base is where we have defined uh, like all the information regarding the model and then we group them under CS1, CS2 till this CS6 construction stages so let me switch one by one so this is a shortcut key for define construction stages go to load construction stage this both are same so I'll switch to CS1 first so this is how my CS1 would look like the substructure would be activated in CS2 the girders would be laid on the uh, temporary bearings and the pre-stressing would occur and then CS3 wet concrete load would uh, would be acting and the diaphragms of the span 1 would be uh, casted and the girders would be switched to the permanent bearings whereas for the second span you have the temporary bearings and the girders and the pre-stressing would be done for the second span next I'll go to CS4 the wet concrete load gets deactivated and in this CS4 the composite action should kick in but we did not say in the defined construction stage to, uh, to tell the software that the composite action occurs in CS4 you have a separate option called composite section for construction stage by this feature will uh, uh, let know the software that the composite action should start from CS4 so in CS4 you have the wet concrete load in for the second span and in CS5 it gets hardened and CS at the end of CS5 the bridge would be complete and in CS6 we'll simulate for the time dependent effects then let me undisplay them you can quickly undisplay from clicking reset all click OK I'll go to base 